bread represent his body, and this wine representing his bloodshed, be mindful that even the Lord Jesus Christ is present with us. Some that made an idol even of this, they said, well, he's in the bread. That's why you'll see some, when they get the bread, they don't even put it in men's hands like we have. They've got to put it right on the tongue, so they don't want any part of it falling in the nose. Jesus just fell on the floor. Some, they make such an idol of blood, they won't even let participants drink of the blood. I don't know how that is. God. And there are others. Again, it's amazing how idolatrous we are because there's some that say, well, we don't want to diminish the value of it. So what we believe is somehow the spirit of Christ is around the bread and around the cup so that when we partake, that's where his presence is. They want to make an idol out of the elements. But what we do is, and as Christ said, is this do in remembrance of me. So as we partake and eat and drink, we're remembering Christ. But his presence is where? With his people. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So when we come, that's where we know his presence is. It's in our hearts. By him we give praise and glory. But he's present. Wherever his people are, he's present. If you had to pick him out of a lineup of people and figure that by his looks he was the Son of God, there wouldn't have been a person to compare. But the flesh is attracted to such people. And preachers love to have it so. They like to have their picture everywhere they can. Up on banners. And published far and wide. And so, not only did he have that as his downfall, because it says there in verse 25 of 2 Samuel 14, in all Israel there was none to be so much praised as Absalom for his beauty. So imagine him now at the gate. People like, man, that's an attractive young man. And he starts to use this for his own advantage. He prepared him chariots and horses. But it was a preparation for what? Rebellion. Anytime you see people making changes in how things are done, and how the Lord has established them, they're in trouble. People today look at these things even with regard to places of worship. It's got to be grandiose. It's got to have the ore. It's got to have the chandeliers and the size and everything about it. Or else people won't consider it. Why do people consider those things? Again, their hearts are deceived. It's part of the deception. People are deceived by something new and impressive to their eyes and ears. They're always looking for something new. 